And now on Who's Views, it's time for the latest headlines with JT and the Hootastic panel. Hello, Who viewers. Welcome back. Yes, it's us at Who's Views. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. It is headlines. And this is the one that I think you've been waiting for because we are going to be talking about the, la- the latest alleged Doctor Who trailer that was dropped on Easter Day. We want to know what you think about it. And I'm going to be asking you the question a little bit later on in the show. Are you excited yet? Hmm, I think I can hear some of those rock clies coming back right now, but I want to know also not just what you think, but what these two think about this. And are they excited? It's Paul, and of course, it's third Doctor Ian. Well, here we are. No, I'm not excited, no. <laughs> I'm excited to be here, but not about the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's all coming up because, as I say, yes, on Easter Day, another trailer was dropped, wasn't it, everybody? So start uh, thinking about what you want to tell us. I am sure that you all want to talk about this. So welcome, welcome, welcome to your headlines here at Who's Views. Before we start though, um, everybody, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody that sent messages and emails um, about our show over the Easter weekend, Playing for Laughs. I'm glad you enjoyed that because we wanted a bit of fun before May. So thank you so much for all that. And I just want to say um, also a big shout out to Crimpoline de Bloom, who um, sent us a message to let us know everyone we showed a picture on uh, Playing for Laughs of William Hartnell and Peter Butterworth from a film called Double Confession. And he said, please let everybody know that Double Confession is going to be screened on Talking Pictures this Friday afternoon at 12.35 lunchtime. Um, and that's brilliant, isn't it? So there you go, on Talking Pictures oh, this week. Fantastic. I'll oh, make record yeah. that. Yes, I thought I would do the same because I've never seen it. So thank you, CD. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for letting us everyone know. So that's uh, Double Confession with William Hartnell, with Peter Butterworth in there, as well as lots of other people, talking pictures this Friday afternoon at 12.35 lunchtime here in the UK. Ooh, that's that's cheered me up. There is something that's going to bring me down again now, quite frankly. Before we get to the main topic as well, I want to talk about our first headline this evening. Now, I was one of those people that's been saying for a couple of years now, um, actually, guys, obviously, next year, 2025, is the 20th anniversary of the reboot of Doctor Who coming back in 2005 with Chris Freckleston and with RTD and his whole crew there. We, yeah, we know that, we know that. But I was sort of uh, thinking, yeah, they're bound to do something which is a pat on the back and congratulating themselves about how wonderful, how marvellous, how brilliant they are for this thing getting to 20 years. Well, it seems like I was wrong because over the last few days, this has appeared. Now, this is, this is actually taken from Den of Geek, but they got a lot of their information from the latest edition of Doctor Who magazine. So let's look at this, shall we? Russell T. Davis rules out new Doctor Who 20th anniversary special. Ooh, it continues with, he's got a point, says Den of Geek. Doctor Who hasn't lacked for anniversary celebrations of late. The 60th in November 2023 came in alarmingly hot pursuit of the 50th in November 2013. Apparently, there was an entire decade between them. But where's the proof? It felt like five minutes. I actually know what they mean there. And just before the Diamond Celebration, there was a whole 100 years of the BBC hoopla, complete with a multi-Doctor-ish story and special episodes of Blue Peter and The Repair Shop. The article goes on saying, really, for anybody who's keeping track, there must be a Doctor Who anniversary to celebrate on any given day of the year. First appearance of the Daleks, the first regeneration, first time the polarity was reversed on the neutron flow, the cyber controller's birthday, dot, 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 dot. To mark it all would be madness. And so showrunner Russell T. Davis makes perfect sense when he says that 2025 won't have a special to mark two decades since the show's 2005 revival. Writing in March 2024 in Doctor Who magazine, number 602, Davis explained, Ever since I came back to this job, people have been asking me if I'm going to do anything special for the 2025 season to celebrate the fact that it marks 20 years of New Who. But to be honest, no. Sorry, I don't think that's wise. 
Even though it's a time travel show, I don't think it looks good to have a 100th, then a 60th, then a 20th, let alone the fact that will be season two or series 15 within a 20 year span. It's mind boggling. Let's just look forward. Solid plan, says Den of Geek. 2025 is already scheduled to have eight episodes of Doctor Who plus a Christmas Day special. To stuff in a new anniversary special navigating around the conspicuous Christopher Eccleston shaped hole wouldn't make sense. Especially when David Tennant's Doctor already made such a successful return <laughs> at 14 <laughs> in last year's. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, 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 just, yeah. just, just, just <laughs> shock. <laughs> Nobody That's wants. Nobody wants to prove the law of diminishing Doctor Returns. Okay, what do you make of that? <laughs> well, Ian, Ian's choking said it all, to be fair. You're okay, though. Yeah, you're fine. Good, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's kind of, a, it is, it's laughable, really, isn't it? Because obviously they're embarrassed, uh, but it just confuses and muddies the water. And they never did much with a 60th anyway, so what would it be? be a bit of a, another damp squib, probably. Well, the 60th, I keep saying to it, don't I, Hugh, viewers, and you're probably fed up with me saying it, but the 60th, what was special about those 60th? They, they were just very poor 2008 episodes, which ruined that whole beautiful 2008 series, in my opinion, watered down David Tennant's doctor, had him lectured to by some idiotic lines and a whole scene that wasn't necessary, lectured to the public, um, and were a bit wishy-washy and forgetful. I can't really remember them. That could be my age. Um, <laughs> and was was David Tennant successful, as it says in the article, or not? Well, that's arguable. I'm sure everybody in the chat will be um, telling us whether or not he was successful. I would say he was not. Um, but let us know what you lot are thinking in the chat, as you are already doing. But I just I thought, you know, um, I'm gonna, I'm going to hold my hand up and say, well, I was wrong then, or was I? Mm -hmm. I, I don't trust the word Russell T Davis says anyway. I think they would always argue Tennant was successful due to their pumped up ratings that nobody really believes. But it, it's just the, the way he said there, I don't think that's wise. Nothing he's done since coming back has been wise, but he's done it anyway. So that's another reason not to believe a, a thing he says. You know, the, the, the moment you can start distrusting Russell T Davis is when his lips move and they never <laughs> seem to stop moving so it's well, that, just, that, it's, that means it's going to happen then doesn't it there'll be an yeah, well you know when they asked yeah, him yeah. when yeah. they asked him at that concert whether or not he would do a musical episode and he's like oh that would be good maybe season two season three he'd already written it filmed it and it was in the can yeah you know yeah. and um yeah so don't don't believe a word he says he speak with forked tongue and the same um, with David Tennant coming back, and the same with yeah. Stephen Moffat coming back, etc., etc. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah. It's all just, yeah, mm. lies it, wrapped in a rictus grin. It's you know. it's quite bizarre, isn't it? As well in that article, um, uh, he's quoted as saying that since he started to to do write the show again, every, everybody, people have, around him have been asking, "What do you mean? Do you actually mean people like?" The people that you work with, Russell, <laughs> because you know, were the fans asking you that? I don't think so. I really don't yeah, think yeah, so. They also have to decide whether it's the same show or not. If they're claiming it's the same show, then it has to be the sickness has been done and that's it. Seventieth, the next one, or whatever's going to happen. You know, not not mixing the two together or separating them. I would actually rather they separated them, though, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always yeah. said the, yeah. the nearer we got to the end of Moffat's years, the more it wasn't a continuation really because yeah. at, at a certain point you could actually see from about about Matt Smith's time onwards you could actually see all roads were leading to Whitaker. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. It was on the way. It was gonna happen. Yeah. They were gonna bend the knee and they were yeah. going to do it even though they didn't need to and nobody was yeah. asking or wanted it. Hello yeah. to everybody in the chat here. Kirsty, um knock it off will you because she's saying um I was a young whippersnapper twenty years ago. Oh ho oh, 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 oh. <laughs> still are what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> and so are we. Jabe, hello to Jabe. I mean, I saw a trailer for something, but I had no idea it was meant to be Doctor Who. Yes, we're coming up to that very shortly. Blue Planet is here. Hello, hello to you, Blue Planet. The world is laughing at Doctor Who. They won't be watching it. It's become nothing more than a global embarrassment. Meddling Funk is saying to us, 20 years, it only feels like yesterday. Yeah, that's what happens when you get older. 
<laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Time goes very, very quickly. Absolutely. Hello to Michael Q as well. Uh, Garbage is here in the chat. So again, thank you to Garbage and Kirsty for making everybody happy and comfortable in the chat. Really appreciate it. Big parts of the team. Jabe is saying to us, I mean, I saw a trailer. Oh, I said that one. Has that come up twice? Oh, absolutely outrageous. Raymond is with us in the chat as well. Hello, Raymond. And Paul is saying to us here, just the usual smoke and mirrors from RTD. I thought at first, but then again, the Disney paymasters want to pretend it's season one, don't they? So perhaps there won't be a 20th anniversary. To it's be a honest, good point. The, yeah. To be honest, the 60th was kind of a 20th anniversary celebration, wasn't it? There was hardly anything about, about classic who at all, was there? Mm -hmm. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only good thing about those specials was we got to see Bernard Cribbins one more time. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. that was good. Yeah. Yeah. His last that, was scene, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And that, that's going to go down in entertainment history, isn't it? That one. Uh, Neville. Hello to Neville. He's saying the not specials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Raymond is saying to us, yeah, he agrees with himself. The 60th was forgettable trash. Well, I don't remember much about it apart from being hugely offended. As they say, um, Woodhouse one two two Rory, hello. Eccleston was right in never coming back to the show. Tenant coming back in twenty twenty three ruined his original time in the show. That's yeah. always going to be the problem, isn't it? If you come back for a one off, it's it's special. You know, it's okay, as they proved in eighty three with the five doctors. But if yeah. you're going to come back and come back and come back and come back, that has to be the final straw with him now because he's not going to be as popular for the seventieth, is he? No. Really, not at all. It's constant coming back. I mean, it gets a little bit like acid reflux, doesn't it? After a while, it just burns yeah. constantly, and you're sick of it. Yeah, and, and you can't take back. anything for it, can you? To be fair, no, uh, no, you can't. You know, you can yeah. chug Gaviscon for the other thing, but with Tenant, yeah. yeah. permanently there. No, no, you can't. To be honest, though, as I've said before, everybody, I don't think it's going to get to the seventieth. But that's just me. Um, with Douglas is uh, saying to us here, I bet there will be an episode in season two set in 2005 at a minimum. That's what they're possibly going to do. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I, th I think you're right there, Doug. Yeah, uh, just as a little nod. Yeah. Um, and uh, from National Treasure to Global Joke, is there really any coming back for Doctor Who? It's just becoming a laughing stock, says Jack. Nice to see you, Jack. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and what else we got here? Tony's with us. Hello, Tony. Hi all. I think we've had. Uh, I think we've had for our anniversary with classic. Who included? I think we've had. What's that mean? I think we've had for an anniversary with classic. Who included? Okay. Had <laughs> Sorry, it. Mate. Yeah. I think we've had it. For an oh, oh you, I think we've had it for an anniversary. Oh yes, There's there we no go. Chance, I think, yeah. There it is. Uh, <laughs> are you on a phone? I hate typing on phones. Richard is with us here. Good evening, folks. Hello, good evening to you, Richard. Oh, look, the chat is... <laughs> what fresh horror awaits us. Whoa, that's the thing about headlines. It's always going to be little bits and pieces there. Uh, but there we go. So that, that's Russell T. Davis saying that there will not be a 20th anniversary special. Does anybody actually care? Because um, I don't. Do you too? No, just call him Pinocchio anyway. But, um... I think that's a very valid point, though, that somebody made earlier, that Disney are referring to it as season one. So they're not going to want to bankroll something that says season 20 or year 20 or anything like yeah, that. Because yeah. to them, it'll be like 20 years of what? This is series one. They, they, they won't tolerate it. And of course, Russell T. Davis is on the mouse's chain as yeah, much as he hates it. Well, it I seems like the mouse is leash. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem to be. And, and I don't know, it's quite it's quite bizarre because the thing seems to get everywhere, doesn't it? I mean, you know, you just can't, you can't Behind really. You, or in what? front of you even. What? What? what was it? In front of you. Behind what? you. What? 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 I don't know what was happening. <laughs> I, but you just, you've got to be careful, haven't you? Because that thing seems to get everywhere and it seems to take control of everything. So I don't know what's happening with it. Um, but anyway, so that's that. There we go. Let's see what plays out, shall we, yeah. Who viewers? <laughs> Welcome to Who's Viewers. Talking of horrors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're watching headlines. And don't forget, of course, here on Who's Views, we just want you to know that, you know, whatever your opinion, whatever you think of what's going to be happening throughout May, June, we are here for you. Please remember our very vital service. Yeah, yeah, because we are, of course, looking at a lot of trauma 
going on over the next couple of months and we will be here for you all the step of the way <laughs> over the next week well don't forget that we will uh, we will take your hard-earned grotsits not a problem at all and that brings us to oh god Easter Sunday and what happened is that the BBC dropped not just the trailer but the titles for the forthcoming series one of RTD2 Disney Who didn't they and so let's get into this as the kids say and uh, let's see what you guys are thinking about this we're just going to start uh, guys with the titles now for the first time ever they released them on Easter Day every half hour um, with little trailers, um, which I, I thought was quite sweet of them, you know, you know, but it, it could be that these little trailers turn out to be better than the episodes. Who knows? We'll soon be finding out. But let's look They're at what... much got. shorter, which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> and on a little loop, so they can say, yeah. oh, look, they got a lot of views. Yeah. But we had, of course... In order, episode one is called Space Babies, which reminds me actually of Muppet Babies for some bizarre reason. But Space Babies, written by Russell T. Davis, directed by Julie Ann Robinson. Episode two is The Devil's Code, writer Russell T. Davis and directed by Ben Chesel. That's going to be your favourite one, JT, I promise you. Yeah. Be quiet. <laughs> episode three <laughs> is Boom, written by Stephen Moffat and directed by Julie Ann Robinson, as we've spoken about on the show recently. Episode four is called 73 Yards, written by, oh, look, Russell T. Davis and directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. Episode five is called Dot Nettle. No, it's not. Sorry about that. It's called <laughs> Dot and Bubble, written by... Oh, somebody called Russell T. Davis and directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. <laughs> Episode six is called Rogue, written by Kate Heron and Bryony Redman and directed by Ben Chesel. Two people I've never heard of there. The Legend of Ruby Sunday goes to be uh, episode seven, written by Russell T. Davis and directed by Jamie Donahue, which I think he's been on Doctor Who before, hasn't he? I think he has, yes. Yeah, okay. And finally... The big one, the one that the law pushes, the grand finale, because that's what they tend to do in these sorts of things these days. But The Empire of Death, written by Russell T. Davis and directed by Jamie Donahue, rounds off this season here. Um, all right, then. So they were the titles. Reactions to those guys? Well, the first one got me. Um, I just thought that just sounds awful. It really does. It sounds like children's BBC. I mean, there's no, in fact, all the titles have nothing really to grab. Maybe the last one, Emperor of Death, is a bit Doctor Who. That, that sounds Doctor Who. I'm sure yeah. everybody as well that there was a Virgin Missing Adventures called there was Empire of Death. Glass. Oh, maybe it's that I'm thinking about. But yeah, that's probably the only one that sounds like, you know, to others, Igons or Death of the Daleks or something a bit yeah. more exciting. But mm. Space Babies? Really? Space baby! Oh, yeah, we're going to be talking more about space babies in a couple of minutes, isn't it? Um, look, the chat is going absolutely fantastic here with all this. Um, to, yeah, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming on all that. Um, hello to Al. Hello, Al. Nice to see you. Uh, never seen you here before, so hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Who's Views. You need a safe space. This, this will be your safe space. You can come and talk to us at any time you want. Between this show and our other shows, this will be your safe space. What is a safe space? Is like an airing cupboard you lock yourself in for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone These people have got to realise the world is hard. You know, someone nice and cosy to, to rest your head. That's what you want. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Just stay in your bedroom if you need to stay safe. Space. Cell, in your bed. <laughs> Weirdo. Richard is saying something here. Good grief. Mm. Michael said "Space Babies" in huge, big capital letters there. First kablam, now boom. Basic much, says Jack Thursby. Bobby, I have Bobby. Space Baby sounds like a bad sci-fi B-movie title. It's the Space Baby ones that really seems to go anything. The Devil's Chord, says Garbage, is also known as Glee in Space. It certainly looks like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doctored Who and the Devil's Shore, says Richard. <laughs> That's a good one. That, that could be the title of the Target book, BBC Book Penguin. Uh, Dot and Bubble, nicknames for RTD and Chibnall's Brains. Ooh, Jack, is on the, he's on fire tonight, isn't he? Rogue is the one I am not looking forward to. The two, two woke feminist activist Loki races. Ah, oh, that rings yeah. a bell for yeah. me. Of course, yeah. right? Oh, so that then. Yeah. 
that's them. Yeah. And um, Brian Redman, I never saw Loki because. I saw the first series, but I didn't see the second one. I was it was okay, but it wasn't as it wasn't as good as we were expecting, to be honest. Wouldn't oh, want really? to be a male character in that. No. Oh, oh, oh is it that bad? Well, oh. you'll probably end up being completely humiliated and emasculated, and probably like that Whitaker story with the idiot with the green hair from in between us having to walk around with his thumb in his mouth all the time. I have no idea what you're talking about, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only one that interested me was Legend of Ruby Sunday. Yep, so that's, um, what did I say that was? That's episode seven, Curse. You've got a hell of a long time to wait for that one. Medlin Funk is saying to us, some of the titles seem like they couldn't be bothered to think of anything <laughs> better. Yeah, so it's size of it, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, uh, legend has it that Ruby is already out of the show, says Jack. Yeah, but two years ago she left, I think, yeah. Mm. Or a few um, <laughs> and Paul is saying to us just the clip of the baby with the superimposed mouth I am aghast that something so utterly dated looking would make it to TV embarrassing um, and that's that's the um, that's from the trailer that bit there wasn't it and if you didn't see yeah. this I mean th that, that part of the trailer was totally totally bizarre yeah yeah that's really weird um, what is this mother care yeah, it's weird. Oh, space mother care. Yeah. It's, a ten nation, it's a ten nation rule, isn't it? Put put the word space before anything that's yes. like space car and that kind of thing. You know, so space maybe, baby. That's... Maybe they're all waiting for gender reassignment surgery because they're old enough, aren't they? Well, according to some of these people, possibly. Yeah. But it just looks like, see the wee, the, 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 the wee soul on the left there, the little cutie there on the left. He's obviously saying, what the hell am I doing here? Who are you, weirdos? What's going on? Why am I well, here, honey? It's, it's the one in the middle that, that kind of speaks, or it looks like he's having a stroke. It's a bit weird. It's a really odd, odd kind of uh, um, odd one. You know, do, yeah. do you know what? Uh, we're going to look. We're going to look at some more of the stills, of course, from the um, from this trailer thing. Everybody, um, I, you'll be thrilled to know, I'm sure. But with these, with these, um, the whole thing. Now, I use this term in the thumbnail for this particular show. With these um, titles, yeah, Space Babies, The Devil's Chord, Boom, 73 Yards, Dot and Bubble, Rogue, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, Empire of Death. And then some of the scenes that were in the actual trailer, including this particular one, this is when I thought, this looks plastic. This looks really hollow. And where's all this money they're telling us they've had? Because I've seen that sort of scene done better in other shows with less money. They, they did it in better Doctor Who when they did to go on the fireplace. That was much more... Um, period. Lavish. Perfect. Lavish. Yeah, that's the word. Lavish, yeah. Compared yeah. to that, you know, it's weird. Yeah. Black Orchid yeah. looked all Black right. Black Orchid, yeah, yeah. With half... Well, not even, well, not even half. Yeah. We'd like, they did that on 20p, let's face it. But do you, do you know what I mean by plasticky? It looks... False in a, in in some of these scenes. What do you think, who viewers? It, it does. Plastic was the word that came to my mind immediately. It looks like you know the Blue Peter set, where it's just all that plastic in there. You know, it's a bit like if you think about when when sometimes if we do American things and we try to play America or America tries to do Britain, it's a bit like an interpretation of what Regency would be like through the eyes of someone who wasn't hadn't researched it properly. If you know what I mean. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, let us know what you think about the look of this as we go through the trailer. Did you have any particular favourite moments of this trailer? Am I asking the wrong question there? Um, do ask. Do uh, uh, let me know. Are you? Did any of it excite you? Because I wasn't excited by this. I've watched it once and I blinked, and then I had to go and look at it again. But I didn't really watch it because I was taking the screen grabs for you, so I didn't really look at it properly. But are you? And are you excited? Tony is telling us here the Devil's Chord. I bet there that would be the one with my beloved Beatles. I'll be swearing and throwing things at the telly then. And Neville agrees by saying there will be rattles out of the pram. Russell Tiger threw his rattle out of the pram years ago, didn't he, really? <laughs> I don't think the Beatles are giving this very much. I think they'll be in it very briefly to establish where they are, and then everything will kick off. You'll see them at the beginning and the end, and that'll be it, if you're lucky. Oh, I don't know. If spoil them. Yeah. Mark is saying to us, they sound like names of director video movies of the 1980s. Yeah. Mm. What about what about how one of the episodes totally excludes anybody that's been brought up 
metric. You know, how are they supposed <laughs> yeah. to understand yeah. that? That's that's outrageous. They should get oh, yeah. Yeah. It, should, it should in brackets be 66.75 or something like that. <laughs> um, or it should have asked your granddad at the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Or your granddad. Well, yeah. Both feet and inches. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Kirsty was saying to us here, my fiance was saying there is a sci-fi book with babies being older on a ship. This could be a poor man's version. Mm. Ooh, Paying homage uh, or plagiarizing, whichever you prefer. Yeah. Well, but they don't do it as well as they used to do, do they? Um, not as yeah. clever. Richard is saying to us, Doctor Who and the rogue microaggressions of the darlings. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> good. And Michael is saying, Boom by Stephen Moffat. Good luck, Doctor Who fans. I think there's going to be an awful lot of luck that's going to be needed from just this little second trailer. It's also interesting, isn't it, everybody, that there was a second BBC trailer hot on the heels of the first one. Um, yeah. I, I think that's odd. Blue Worm, hello to you. Just stumbled in. No curse of or monster of titles. No, because that's problematic. Mm. That's true. Yeah. It's problematic, isn't it? And Nathan is saying to us, hi, all proof there's no more imagination or dynamic thought. Mm. Well, it's outlawed, I think you're right. Yeah. It's mm. outlawed at Disney. They're not, you know, you can't shock, you can't scare, you can't frighten, you can't suggest there's any kind of inherent threat that, that you know all the stuff that made it exciting and successful you can't do it anymore no well i, I have to disagree there are some scary bits in the trailer though Ian, don't you think well when you know i was gonna think was there i missed that bit. that's when i blink hello sam sam surprised they haven't yet to use safe space as a title give him time, <laughs> give him time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, we, we all thought alike then, isn't it? We'll, we'll wait for series two. Yeah. Oh, and uh, hello to Culture Popper B Hop. Wow. I love that name. That's a yeah. fab. Love fab name, right? Lovely to see you. He's saying, hey, all. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul wants to know, why the hell are those babies in buggies? At least put them in floating pods or something. Jeez, it really is like a big tongue in cheek joke. That's why I was thinking, you know, that whole that whole picture there when it comes up, it does look like space mother care there, doesn't it? Because, you know, they've obviously nipped down to the, the local um, mother care style shop. Mother care is no longer around, but the equivalents. And they've bought loads yeah. of buggies put little bits and pieces on to make them look like something from space or the future doesn't work doesn't yeah. work does it they've just they got a card of high street on. haven't they just bought them um, <laughs> they are 50 50 on diversity there though aren't they oh they have to be don't they the 25 no, cameras in them as well on the sides i think something like that either that was for the little cups <laughs> yeah yeah, some little cups. Yeah, it's like you're having your car. You know, you've got your cup holder kind of thing. <laughs> on your, it's on your, on your bottle holder, really, I would imagine. Not, oh. not a bottle holder when you're driving. I mean, for the kids, you know. <laughs> yeah, moving, on, moving on swiftly. So, yeah, there we go. So there's the titles again for you all. You all know them now. Space Babies, The Devil's Court, Boom, 73 Yards, uh, dot, net, dot and Bubble, Rogue, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, and The Empire of Death. Um, okay. I think visually, there's some nice visual sort of space scenes with the TARDIS flying about and stuff. That's quite nice. Mm. Uh, but most of it is really just not very exciting. I swear I heard the TARDIS crying as it's, as it's spinning past out of embarrassment, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. Meddling Funk is saying to us here, I noticed that he was singing again in the trailer yes they're really pushing that musical one aren't they for some very strange bizarre reasons you got several clips from that some of them i've managed to get for you here there was of course this now this is actual the real life in case you're outside the uk this is abbey road very famous for having tourists on it every single bloody day you can never drive through it that's just my experience um, you never get through this particular part. And then this, of course, we all know the famous shot. They they wouldn't have been able to resist that, would they? Um, so the the, the, the the zebra crossing there is very, very near to the door. You just turn a bit to the, the right there and the, the door for Abbey Road Studios is there. Even the, you know, you can tell it's on that day or it's meant to be on that day where that famous picture was shot because look at the cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, credit where credit's due, though, whoever arranged to get that, because that's a busy, busy street. And to get it closed well, off and to put your props in, i.e. those period cars. Unless it's Do you cruising. remember when they did the 
Capaldi and uh, Clara and two Daleks on it a few years ago. Oh, and yeah. And had to stop the traffic and all that. But they did it uh, as an impromptu photo call thing. So they didn't close off the road. But that took ages for them to film that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because the, it it is a very, very, very busy road. Um, so to do that, unless you, um, what were you going to suggest, Ian? Unless I've uh, green screened it, because I mean, I've just. Uh, can you pull it back up? Yeah, I mean, it's it's fairly close to the actual album cover. The VW on the left. It's on the album cover. It's a. It looks like a taxi on the right. There's a few more cars on the right in the album. Yes, cover. there is. Yeah. But it is. Yeah. It is set out very much like it. So it's almost like it's trying to infer maybe it's on the day. That's what I'm thinking. It, it's on the day yeah. that the photo, that infamous photograph of the Fab Four was taken. That's that's what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, they were really pushing it. I mean, they they all seem to come from the same episodes, don't they? These clips. Um, I, uh, we're going to have to mention him because he was in it again. All the people that are in this particular series, we were talking on the last episode, weren't we, about the fabulous Sean Phillips, proper acting royalty being in this, not one clip of her. Yeah. Um, Anurin Bernard is in this. No mention of him at all. It's always about this one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And even in this, I thought, oh, my God. Get to you get to hear him speak in this. Now, this is the first time I've ever heard Jerick talk. I have never ever seen him on anything. I don't know who he is. I've never heard the voice, and it grated on me. So, yes, Paul, you're right. This is going to be my favorite episode of the bunch, isn't it? It will be, yes, yes. Oh, God. Yeah. And he said something like you called or something, and it was enough to get the hairs on the back of my neck going, oh, 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 you know, standing up and Oh God! It's such a shame it's the Beatles episode because I, I actually thought I was quite looking forward to this as a possibility of an episode, but the fact he's in it uh, makes it even scarier than it's meant to be. I think, which is a shame. But... Yeah, he's climbing out of a piano. Is the piano a TARDIS? Is it bigger on the inside? Don't start speculating. Don't go speculating. Oh, uh... you say it's the Rani? Could it be the Rani? <laughs> and that's all. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. because on that one, of be... course, some of those poor unfortunate souls. Uh, who have joined us in Doctor Who fandom over the last few years, are insisting that he is playing the Rani. Um, that will be a very interesting review show for us if that turns out to be anywhere near the, near the truth. I mean, the Rani wouldn't have been seen dead with that wig. That's not strictly true. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. The Rani had taste. She had class. You've forgotten time the Rani in wearing Bonnie's wig. Uh, Bonnie's red hair, aren't you? Yeah, but that was to fool it. That was in context of the story. It wasn't just turning okay, up and going, look at me, I'm the most... Bad wig. It's a very similar kind of quality. This, this one's about billed as the most dangerous adversary the Doctor's ever faced in his 61-year history. Yeah, well, that's maybe if she dropped yeah. the piano on him, maybe. Yeah. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's have a look. Plastic, says Neville, is a good word for it. I think it's not meant to look real. I didn't know how else... It was the first word, Neville, that came to my head when I looked at that thing. I just thought it was plastic and it was false. Um, like certain people's booby doos these days, you know, that's what gets me about that. Hello, Bedwia, our friend Bedwia, who tested panel member yeah. is going, bleh, bleh, bleh. Yeah. <laughs> Paul said he showed his kids who are age five and eight. Hello to them. Hello, hello. And they lost interest after a few seconds into the trailer, which is a great achievement because it's only on for a few seconds. Yeah. And that's part of their audience, isn't it? <laughs> that is supposed to be it. Yes, yeah. that that is supposed to be it. Um, but if that's the case, how many of these kids are going to be looking at it? Uh, Culture, Culture Bopper B-Hop, that's testing me, is saying, I kept thinking shallow. Yes. Uh, not like the yeah. personalities per se, but it just comes across like it's going to lack depth of story. I totally agree. I've actually got shallow and hollow written here as well, Culture Bopper B-Hop. Um, and I think they're going to be my three key words <laughs> as we look at these episodes. So, um Let's see if it convinces me otherwise, shall we? I'm going to quote Mr. Baker from the season 15 box set. Superficially oh, shallow. Oh. Yeah. He's, He's a man with word. Hang on. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Vapid, Mark is vapid and vacuous. Oh, yes. up again. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is saying to us, are they that disconnected from reality that they don't realise the ongoing issues involving global... I don't know. Are we allowed to say those next two words here on, on the tube of who? So we'll just say that. 
this is the state we're in now where you're actually thinking about are we allowed to say certain words or will we get pulled for it it's shocking yeah. isn't it we're supposed to be a democratic at least in the western world and facts we can't talk facts um it's terrifying richard is also saying the extra money goes to the lazy staff in the office but not on the show can you guys in the chat actually see any of this alleged millions that disney have invested in this or is it all in the tardis um yeah they've blown on the tardis haven't they really but uh, and even that's not that exciting is it no jack is saying to us the most sexualized doctor is incoming he is eyeing up all the guys um yeah now that could possibly be to do with this episode which i'm assuming is the rogue one written by these two people you were talking about uh kate heron right, yeah and Bryony redman mm -hmm. uh, so i'm assuming you mean that one jack yeah. um because of this yeah and on our last episode of headlines we were talking about the fact that that gentleman he might be flirting with possibly could be a brand new captain jack and i mean I face swapped <laughs> yeah mm. maybe the, here's another theory maybe they're the land of fiction and the doctor got his face wrong that could happen yeah Jeez. i'll get my coat it's fine <laughs> yeah i was really do you know when we saw that still last year of the three leads in those beautiful outfits I was actually thinking, oh, that could be a really good period piece about a mystery or one of those sort of traditional pieces where something's happened and the doctor just happens to be there having a very suave dinner and yeah. showing his companion, this is how they used to live. doesn't look as if I'm going to get that, does it? No, it's the doctor dances again. Again. Yeah. So. In, a, in what looks like, to be honest, quite a cheap set. Mm. I mean, look at that. What do you think of this? There's Gene Wilder there on the left. Can you see? <laughs> yes, is, yeah. Willy Wonka. Yes. Yeah. Um but we've I mean that even that backdrop was painted. Yeah. What do you think? Of? They're slightly slightly panto esque, aren't they? A bit sort of very mm. Disney kind of beauty and the beast kind of, you know, sort of thing. Hmm. I, I like this I like the thing panto esque. Yeah. You know, uh, I think I think that what can. But as I say, I've seen that much. But you mentioned um, the Clockwork One. What was it called? Yeah, Girl on the Fireplace. Yeah, thank you. That looked a lot, as we say, lavish. It looked a lot better with none of the money that they've got today on that one. And it just yeah. obviously we've got to judge it when we see the full episode. But we are judging it here as well. We will actually in this particular edition. I am going to ask you all for your scores on the Tardis doors for this trailer. Um, because a lot of you did that last time. So we are going to be looking at that a little bit later on. So out of 10, get ready. Sam is saying, in recent years, the trailers for awful films and TV shows have been good because they show all the good bits. <laughs> this time, well, perhaps there just wasn't any good bits. That's a point. It does have, and it's a good, funny one as well. Thank you for that, Sam. And uh, Nathan, I could do RTD's job better. I have better ideas. Well, that's good to know because at some point, a new generation needs to come in and fix the show. <laughs> um, if they're not watching it, though, they're not going to come up through the ranks and do, uh, you know, go to television, blah blah blah, and actually have any any sort of influence on Doctor Who, are they? So, yeah. No, that's it. Um, and. Tony's telling us he's dreading the primeval Jurassic Park ripoff. That's the one with the dinosaurs in. So that was carried over. In, that's in the yeah. two trailers, isn't it, really? Um, Richard is saying, I'm so glad I'm not watching any of these. I am spared further pain and confusion. Uh, well, do you know what, Richard? You might not be watching it, but come and make sure you're watching our, our shows when we start reviewing them, because uh, I'm determined we're going to have a laugh <laughs> somehow. I think, I think the dinosaur one, though, is like, let's show you what the TARDIS can do. We'll stop at Jurassic Park time, whatever, and uh, we'll look at the dinosaurs for two minutes and go away again. That'll be it. There'll be not a whole episode, I'd imagine. Well, you might we'll have to... that for the Silurian spin-off, no doubt. But... Do you remember at the start of the Series 2, um, two-parter at the end, uh, where Rose departed? The, the, yes. the first of the yeah. two episodes, it was her doing a voiceover and yeah. talking about her travels with the Doctor. And there was one scene where they were on some kind of primeval landscape. And yes. There was one, like big pterodactyl type things. And you thought, yeah. that was fantastic. Yeah. And of course, it was literally just, oh, we went here and yeah. then back to London in modern day. Yeah. And yeah. that would have looked, or that would have probably been fantastic. But of course, you just see it as a clip. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's yeah. done the same. It'll thing. be the same thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. 
they do seem to be treading familiar ground for themselves uh, when it comes to this new rebooted reboot 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 version of the show disney who rtd2 one whatever you want to call it but it is series one as far as they're concerned um because not only has the original team all been brought back and reassembled and they're doing this again and not only is russell and i'd just like to say as well a couple of years ago um uh, to various people i was saying well russell's writing the whole thing no he won't no he won't well he is more or less isn't he because we've got two episodes there one written by moffat and one written by kate heron and bryony redmond so i was right you know and i, I think he's surprised the next one Sorry, GTL. I'm actually surprised that he's not got a, a counter credit on it as well, you know, with each of the writers, like like Chibnall did or Moffat did sometimes as well. Oh, did he? Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, so. Well, but uh, what I'm saying is um, there does seem to be some familiar ground, even down to some of the shots. What does this remind you of? Yeah. Yeah. End of the world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Doesn't it just? Yeah. It's the end of the world. And there was even in the trailer as well those pieces to camera. Yeah. Do you want to come with me? Mm -hmm. Except this time it's give me the love in. There's also a shot of a, a planet like a burning and going out of shot as well. Yeah. A bit of the arc, you know, kind of moment like that, you know, going out yeah. of shot. Uh, and I wonder if that's the same kind of idea, you know, like, like end, of, end of the world type idea again. I don't know. But this this really hit home with me. I thought, oh, look, um, I think I know what this is about. This is obviously episode one, Space Babies. Yeah. Space Babies, yeah. This is Rose. Tanks. You, well, I, 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 well, possibly, yeah. Babies, babies in tanks, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I, I didn't know if it was brains. It just looked sort of like brainish. You know, it might be the return of the brains of Morphoton or something like that. Mm. Oh, I wish it was, but at least I'd be getting something. Be a forge around the corner somewhere in a wetsuit. <laughs> yeah. But it, I get the feeling that there's going to be various things we've seen before here as, as Ruby does a rose to introduce any new audience that they're expecting to what Doctor Who's about. Does that make sense? Now, they did it perfectly in 2005 because after 14 years off air, it needed to be done. But this yeah. thing's been off air, well, not. Five minutes. Yeah. Not long enough. <laughs> yeah. Not long enough, not long yeah. Enough. yeah. 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 Um, so that parallel, that particular scene, I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I've seen this before somewhere. And then I realised. <laughs> <I'd Well, seen laughs> <the show. laughs> As you said, it's for a new audience because the audience has seen it before. And it's like, why are you doing it again? You know, because we're not, we're not invited, remember? So that's a... Yeah, yeah. I tried to travel. Yeah, again, it's not for us, is it? Richard yeah. is saying 73 y yards of lace per episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Uh, Kirsty is saying to us, if they mess with the Beatles, I can't wait to sit with popcorn and watch the fireworks. I've, I've said it before, they won't dare. They, won't, they can't. They That's why they're all white and young and mob, you know, with the mop heads. Uh, they can't. The, the Beatles fans are too powerful. Nathan is saying, still don't know what RTD is on. Whatever it is, I don't want to know, but just concerned. I think the time, Nathan, for being concerned of this thing is, is over. I think we've got to actually really, really, it's, 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 it, we've got to just have a laugh with this thing and move on. And that's what we're going to hopefully try and do as we uh, take you all with us through our review shows, because I'm determined to have a laugh through this, even though I probably will kick off a lot by, <laughs> by saying a lot of stuff. <laughs> In America, says Mark. We see UK shows like All Creatures Great and Small, yeah. Endeavour, and Grantchester. We know that good British TV can still be made. It's just not by the BBC. The problem with things like that, All Creatures is the most modern one. Yeah. Uh, Endeavour and Grantchester, not so much now. In fact, Endeavour's now gone. And it was all before this diversity thing was enforced. Yeah. You know, um, So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think we're... I personally think that it's taking its finger off the pulse an awful lot now to produce good things because they're too busy trying to be represented. You know, it's not it's it's that and also said before it's all about Disney trying to fill the fill their channel and uh, with lots of uh, quantity and no quality. So I, I'm sure we're going to be coming back to that point a lot, Paul, when we start hearing about these alleged spin-offs, of which have none have been officially announced yet. I wonder what's going on there. Ooh. Perhaps they're trying to focus all on season one of their new rebooted Disney Who, Doctor Who, and um, then they'll surprise something on us. I don't know. But it's an interesting point that one of you made there as well about perhaps the world of those um, 
dinosaurs could be leading to something else because sometimes that's what they would have done in in the reboot yeah. at the yeah. beginning wouldn't they they would have placed something in there and said oh look by the way there's something coming off the back of this like tooth and claw I or a if, story title i'm quite pleased yeah, with myself there we go. I, I wonder if, if mickey's annoyed and that's why they're not released the uh the um information about the spin-off series yet because they've realized that the actual current show is in a very poor state of affairs maybe i don't mm, know mm. hello to Gemma. Nice to see you, Gemma. But she says that uh, that looks like Bette Midler from Hocus Pocus. That's what my wife said. My wife said that as well, yeah. yeah. Except Hocus Pocus is brilliant and Bette Midler is an yeah. icon. Yeah. <laughs> um, number two wasn't that brilliant. Um, Wicked Witch of the West, says Kirsty. And Richard is saying ghastly. Wow. Were there any standout moments for you two as this blooming thing? Not, not really. I mean, just I, I did like the visual effects of the TARDIS in space. That was quite nice. But apart from that, not particularly. Yeah. Oh, what about you, Ian? Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. Forgettable. I'd, I'd love to have seen something that that made it memorable, even just a, a, a scene or something like that. Something, but it, it's it's all very massive palette of colours and things like that. You know, I remember looking back at Matt Smith and they, that episode with the Dream Lord or whatever it was, and, and you had that blue star and that that visual was was just stunning, I recall. And I can remember that clearer than I can remember anything that happened in this trailer, and that was 12, 13 years ago. Mm. You know? and, and, and likewise, even the dinosaurs, if you go back to dinosaurs in a spaceship, they were uh, probably equally as good if not better than yeah. what we saw in that little clip you know so and that was 2013 wasn't it so it's a long time ago yeah. i can't remember it because it was so damned awful it's been blocked from my memory <laughs> really has um neville says that disney are very good at making money disappear mm. that's fair enough isn't it um <laughs> certainly at the moment it's it's yeah it's right Do you think um, they'll have an episode where they end up in disneyland just so, like, maybe the toy maker returns and he's controlling Disneyland to control people or whatever, bollocks. But just yeah. so they can get a scene of the Doctor and that bloody mouse. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Do you reckon? Yeah. Wouldn't Although they can't, make, they can't make Mickey evil or anything like that, which is a real shame because that's kind of what he's like. It? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's um, black. So, yeah. yeah. Paul is saying it's not lavish, is it? No. And Richard agrees. It says it doesn't look lavish. And Dalek, I love you, is saying to us, I bet Rogue is about a gay relationship and how society then did not approve. I really hope not. I really don't like all that stuff. And I'm yeah. saying this as a, as, a, as a gay man myself. I don't need to see all that. Thank you. You know, it's just, it's just silly. It's, not, it's not, um, not what we need, is it? I think he's right. I think that's going to happen. Yeah, sadly. Oh, God. Well, that's going to be called Rogue. Okay, so we're going to be, we will, of course, be addressing all this, won't we, together? Hopefully, you'll all be with us. What worries me is that Gatwa seems all over the place. His accent changes halfway through a scene. Now, I want to talk about this, Neville. So thank you for bringing this up. Um, because what you've seen, everybody, you two and everybody down there, what you've seen of this gentleman, does it scream Doctor to you? No. It screams something else, I'm afraid, sadly, but to... What? Well, just screaming, isn't it, really, to be fair? But... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a parody. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's a parody, a piss take. It's, it's, your, it's the next poor attempt at a comedy parody. French and Saunders, Lenny Henry. It's just, it's just another one like that. That's what it feels mm. like, anyway, just with... It's a spoof, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you reckon? And not not a very funny spoof, like we said no. yesterday. Not to take it seriously. Yeah, yeah. It, it's also the fact that you know we can't really judge his performance on the one performance we've seen, really. But the lines, the the what what I've heard him say, the my doctor wouldn't say this sort of stuff at all. So what is going on? Why did they, why did they feel the need, and why does RTD feel the need? That it ha the Doctor, who is a character from another time, another place, an alien that's been around for a couple of thousand years, probably, very, very experienced. Why would he suddenly speak streetwise 2024? Yeah. 
I think that's possibly also going to harm the show. It did with David Tennant to an extent. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the stuff that he has to say, it's now dated, all that slang and stuff. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I know that for a fact that they're very concerned, or they were very concerned at one point, with the aliens in London where Rose says, you're so gay. Yeah. And that was what some of the kids at the time were saying, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but now, actually, that's looked on as, as another slur, as a, a homophobic slur. So they wouldn't dare say anything like that again, would they? No. Time's going to tell, isn't it, guys? But I mean, they, they, they kind of they did sort of imply that um, in Blue Yonder, well, Blue Yonder, the one um, they had the middle special, but mm -hmm. the doctor found found um, Sir Isaac Newton quite hot. So the, they're going along this this line that the doctor may be gay, which is a bit like you said. It's like why are they going over sexual aspects of of this for the doctor? We don't want to see that. We want monsters and adventure. Uh, but you do had that, it, you had do it that with something else. You know? TARDIS, didn't you? You know, going going back to Shitika, you had that bed in the TARDIS with the implication that she's there on a night scissoring with Yaz or whatever they do, you know, and it was just totally unnecessary. But it was there anyway. And it, it's there just to make you go, oh, look, they've got a bed in the console room, they're sleeping together, the sex. And no, it, see, I'm comfortable with that. This is the point of what Doctor Who's always been about. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable with that sort of stuff. And it's like it's like um, Jack was saying there, this is poss possibly going to be the most sexualized version of the Doctor we've ever seen. I mean, that whole thing, of we, as we talked about in the last one, where he says, well, give me the loving and stuff. What is that about? That sort of dialogue and a possible OTT delivery of that sort of dialogue is going to grate on me, I'm yeah. afraid. I'm not going to enjoy but that at all. We've seen, if we're lucky, five minutes of the trailers, and it's already grating on me, I have to say. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Richard is saying to us here, Shooty delivers lines. I have yet to see any acting. It's not a kindness to miscast a lesser actor for a role like this. The same mistake was made with Jodie Whittaker. Fair point. I, I think the thing is, I think certain actors can play the Doctor and certain actors can't. It's not oh, totally. A, it's not a part you can just cast willy nilly because they are they are prominent on on Twitter or Instagram. You know what I mean? He has to have that essence of the doctor to make it work i know that's subjective but i think it's true yeah oh i i would agree with you as well actually and so would uh, i'm sure uh, culture bop, popper b hop many people are using their sexuality and the message to supplement their rather lacking personalities that's the vibe that uh, he gets from shooty and rtd for this next season i don't even get a vibe i i just get sheer lack of interest when I look at it, you know, and, and what went before, I, I think the um, the 1990s BBC Two Doctor Who night with those little comedy inserts from mm. the breakout actors at the time. So you obviously had Walliams in there and you had Mark Gatiss and stuff yeah. where they did the original pitch to the BBC for Doctor Who. Yeah. And uh, which which was funny. And it's like, you know, first Doctor, crotchety old man, second one, hobo, third one, James Bond type, fourth one. Then it got so far. And then what next? Oh, any old twat with an equity card. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're actually at that stage, aren't we? Really? I think we are, yeah. yeah. I hate to say it, but we will be obviously talking more about that as the um, series progresses and we get to see more about it. Jabe. Please tell me we have a screenshot of Shooty in his mustard duffel coat and Benny from Crossroads hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got this one. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Patrick Trenton from Fury from DP Ain't. I have to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, again, we don't know what that's about, do we? No, we're we'll um, seeing it in the context, aren't we, to be fair? But, yes. I mean, that shot, though, I mean, look at that background behind them. Is that somebody yeah. else behind Gibson? I think it's a hand opening the TARDIS door. Where's her other hand? No, don't tell me. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So which one do you reckon that one is, everyone? Where's he, where's he actually going to get to that one? Could that be 73 yards? No, I think this is Dot and Bubble over. It's called Dot and Dot and Oh, Yeah. yeah. 73 yards could be the drop to the beach, couldn't it? <laughs> Could that's true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could well be. This one looks like it's from episode two as well, simply because of the costumes, because they are carrying on with what was in the uh, Christmas episode there. So that's See, why I'm I still I still like his shaft look. It looks quite nice, yeah. but they keep changing it all the time. It's give him a chance to establish himself for God's sake, you know. Mm. 
Yeah, that's the danger here, isn't it? But again, this trailer was made up mainly of episodes um, one, two, and three, I reckon. Mm. I think so, yeah. 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 So goodness knows where that one comes into. <clears throat> I think I that's know. the finale of that one there, isn't it? I think. And there's, well, this one as well. Yeah. I think that's the Stephen Moffat one. Oh, really? That could be think, boom. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's it is supposed to be quite dramatic, but again, from that short little still, I'll be interested to see how that is in the context of the show, um, because I'm again going to ask, well, where's all this wonderful money you told us about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Russell, the Russell not saying one occasion just to cover himself that uh, we've got an increased budget, but not it's not massive, you know. And there you are. <laughs> 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 very very probably yeah. uh, Bobby is telling us here that Russell T Davis likes to recycle his ideas that is quite true yeah. um, Mark says he's trying to harvest member berries gosh I have to say um, I hate that expression <laughs> member berries yeah the companions have become far yeah. too overemphasized yeah that's a, that's, a, well, that's a point, isn't it, really? I mean, it was always about the equality thing, really, wasn't it? That the assistant would be the star as well. Um, so that is quite interesting. Please, no musical, says TARDIS Travels. It's too late. Yeah. Far too I, late. I, 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 thought, I thought in the trailer, there's a piece of music in it, and it sounds like the track from Christmas, the one with the, the, the baby-eating goblins. It sounds like that. Oh, another one of those, do you think? Yeah, it's got the same kind of rhythm to it, you know, but... Millie does look fabulous in this episode, though, doesn't she? She, she does, yeah. that whole yeah. sort of 60s vibe of the hair and the, the clothes and those boots. Um, she really looks great in that one. So, oh, gosh, well, I don't know. <laughs> what have we got here? 73 yards of Ruby Sunday's birth, Mum. Is that the umbilical cord? Is that the umbilical cord? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, as yeah. <laughs> As an American says culture popper be hop, I don't need or want Doctor Who catered to me. I want what made it special in the first place, and that is quintessentially British. It's going to be interesting, isn't it, culture popper, that you know we're going to be looking at this um through what, what our reviews, and we're going to be asking, has the Britishness gone? We had a show about that a little while ago. I think it was our last headlines, wasn't it? We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Could that have been gone simply because, you know there is other involvement now. I mean, they're insisting it's not. It's still there. They're all insisting, no, it's still British. It's still British, but... No, it, it's quintessentially Disney now. Yeah. 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 It, it looks like that really could be the case, doesn't it, everybody? Matt, mm. 532, it is lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I keep forgetting it's back on the screen soon. The excitement <laughs> yeah. is completely drained. We, they could stand on a butterfly and go back to Capaldi with better stories. Yeah, I know what you're saying there. I know what you're saying. But thank you very much, Matt532. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. Keep them all coming up. The whole Hooniverse thing seems to be at a standstill, says Dalek, I love you. No mention of what is to come, i.e. spin-offs. At this point, I'm going to ask you, well, do you care? Do you care? I mean, if they come back at the end of this next series, it's going to go two ways for them. It's either going to be, oh, my God, that was amazing. Oh, and look, here it comes, here comes another series on the back of this. Or it's going to be, oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? To be fair, though, if they are going to do a spin-off of Unit or Serials or Lurians, we've said this before, they're just going to destroy that uh, aspect of... Hello, Mickey. That aspect of... Uh, of um, Behind you, in front of you, in front of you. What, what, what? No, not seeing anything, sorry. They're, right. going, to oh, destroy... the something. <laughs> they're going to destroy the Sea Devils and Silurians and destroy Unit even yeah. more than they have done so far. But, yeah. Mm. yeah. Culture is also saying to us, I don't think I'm going to believe Shooty trying to be all tough and threatening. Now, this is the balance with the Doctor, isn't it? Because you've got to have somebody that can perform this whole thing about the character being able to be um, the... I know Lord Russell doesn't like that word, eccentric scientist, but it's quintessentially, we have yeah. four of them all in a row, really. The, the, yeah. the passion came out as eccentricity because he's an alien, you know? Um, so you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to do this whole sort of um relation type thing but you've also got to be able to turn around and be able to say to a baddie this is not on and i'm going to stop you matt smith played it wonderfully he played blinders didn't he he went yeah. from this sort of eccentricity to being able to go stern absolute cracking acting from him on that one got it yeah. in a in a heartbeat like that bang uh capaldi could also do it to a sense but because he also had that ability of just not caring with yeah. his inclination, that was quite an interesting take on it as well. 
I understand what you're saying there, Culture, though. Um, will Shooty be able to, to do that? Will the writing help him, though, more? Or, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Is the writing going to be able to do it? Will he be able to elevate any poor writing he's given? That's the thing. As Terrence Dix used to say, that the doctor's essentially the doctor. Uh, so that has to be written in for, from the start anyway. And I don't think, I think that's missing. There's no, I can't see the doctor in this incarnation at all. There's no uh, feeling of him being the doctor at all. And you have to write that in to make it work. And they've not done that, I don't think. Yeah. Um, no, does not scream doctor at all, says Culture. Well, he isn't the doctor, says Blue Worm. He's a double of him. Garbage is telling us it's like a high school musical. It's nothing, nothing like Doctor Who at all. And this is something that um, uh, Lex Kane isn't able to join us tonight, but he did send me a message to say, could you also tell everybody in the chat for himself, it's still not working for me as a true Doctor Who fan, and it's not winning me over. Yeah. So that I, I, that's where I was sort of standing earlier as well, but I was just thinking, oh my God, because it's forgettable. The whole thing's forget the, the thing about trailers is they should have an impact so that you go, wow, I want to watch that. I don't think this succeeded in that, do you? It's more like, I don't want to watch this. You know, so that's why I feel it. <laughs> when you got the trailer after Christmas Invasion and you mm. wanted to see, you saw that clip of uh, Cybermen and, and bullets won't harm it and, and a little glimpse of K-9 and stuff like that. You could not wait for the three months to pass that's right for that series to be on and you were thinking right what else was in the trailer what's coming next it was so exciting and to go from that to this is is sad really really sad we're in a completely different place now which is a real shame because there's not yeah. that excitement at all which is it's really sad yeah, there is some excitement out there, just to address the balance for those people that watch us and love to criticise us. Um, there is some balance out there. Um, it was interesting, though. I tried to go on to X today to get some um, balance between what I knew we were going to say uh, or, or I theorised what we were going to say. Um, and it was totally to di different to how it was on Sunday. Not that I'm saying that anybody's editing and deleting the comments, but it could be. Um, because all I saw was a lot of the positivity from these, um, we know the sort of people that were there, you know, um, and I just, a, a lot of it was very superficial though. Oh, the effect looks good. Mm. I wasn't, I wasn't going to screenshot them guys. Cause you can go and see them all for yourself. You know what they are, but you know exactly what they're saying. Oh, I love, uh, Shooty's outfit. Oh, Millie looks wonderful. Oh, that looks brilliant. Oh, that looks brilliant. And it was very much, um, like, like, in a sense, the other side of what we're doing, you can't judge a book by its cover, but yet you can. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, and that's what balance we're doing on Twitter is with an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms, isn't it? There's no balance there <laughs> at all, is there? I mean, I mean yeah. uh, uh, mentally, I mean. Yeah. Tardis, <laughs> Travels, Tardis Travels is asking us a cracking question here. Who are they actually making Doctor Who for these days? Um, anyone got any idea? A non audience, one that yeah. doesn't exist. Mythical audience. Mm. Yeah. It's the modern new audience. We've said it before here as well, Tardis Travels, haven't we? It's 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 not there. And they they are insisting, all these people in entertainment are insisting it is, and yet they can't sell theatre tickets, cinema tickets, tickets into the world. They can't, um, you know, get television bums on seats. Oh, and we're the wrong ones. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Doug, thank you, Doug. Shooty is just not giving Doctor vibes when he says, "I'm the Doctor." I think, well, no, you're not. It's more suited <laughs> Captain Jack type of a role. Yeah. I'm going to agree with Culture Popper here. Obviously, you, I'm sure you all know my opinion on that yeah. one. So yeah, that's yeah. right there. Uh, and Woodhouse one two two is saying to Shooty is not convincing in any way as the Doctor. Even Jodie Whittaker was better. Now, hang on a minute. Now, come on, come on. Shit. Woodhouse one two two. taken that too far now, I think. Yeah. Yes. I mean, come on, bit of realism here. We may be scraping the bottom of the barrel here, but we're not going to actually just dig right through it. Come on. <laughs> Someone gave him a sedative. <laughs> uh, maybe he's on a parallel with her, perhaps. <laughs> no, no. We, but we do love you, Woodhouse one two two. You know that. <laughs> not the doctor at all, says Dalek. I love you. All that hugging, kissing, calling everyone honey. Oh, that's one of the. Di I am not going to like that at yeah. all because that's just too. It's camp and it's wrong and it's rubbish and it's not the doctor. How can anyone take him seriously? I can't be done with all that. Honey, honey, honey. He sounds like Karen from Will and Grace. Yeah. 
Yeah, he said that, and I think in the giggle, it's your reward, honey, or something. And then they oh god, that the was excruciatingly yeah. bad, wasn't it? God, that whole yeah, thing. Awful. That's yeah, when I started yeah. to really go, "This isn't for me." Yeah. This dialogue is crude, it's tacky, and it's lazy. And it's coming from someone who's just supposed to get in all this adoration and getting all these awards and who's the biggest thing in television. Really? When he's writing dialogue like that? Are you people actually listening to what he's writing? It's lazy, 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 lazy. Yeah. Um, Raymond is saying to a shooting, might as well step out the TARDIS shouting, I'm free. <laughs> you need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's bound to come. That's bound to come. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that actually does remind me years and years ago of that rumor, you know, John Inman would be the next Doctor Who. Do you remember? Yeah. I remember um, Paul Daniels, yeah. yeah. Paul Daniels and all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Thank you for the laugh there, Raymond. But you've just brought back that memory because I remember being horrified. <laughs> as much as I love John, yeah. if you don't know who John Inman is, go and Google him. He was the star of um, Are You Being Served mainly, but he did panto for years and years and years and years. He was a proper panto dame, not a drag queen. He was a proper panto dame in the British tradition and a wonderful, wonderful fella. But I remember reading that. I think it was something like in the star or something, the mirror or something like that. And my heart just went, no. <laughs> to be fair, though, he's more Doctor Who than Shooty is, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Culture Popper is uh, asking me here. JT, as a gay fella, how do you feel about the Doctor being portrayed overly flamboyant and kissing men, possibly? It's all good if it isn't an agenda, but this is RTD's agenda. I'll be very honest with you. I don't want the Doctor being sexualized in any way, shape or form. I still have issues with the 1996 Paul McGann kiss. Twice. Two of them. That was not the Doctor. My Doctor is Doctors 1 to 7. An eight at a pass, because I like McGann's portrayal and his honesty and his performance and what he tried to do with a dodgy script but when it came back in 2005 culture i was gradually becoming they've, they've moved this on and all that stuff about the doctor dances continuing for all that time it got boring the the, the fact that amy jumped him and even though matt portrayed it, 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 matt was wonderful but, oh, 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 a human yeah. oh pushing him away pushing her away i thought he it wasn't necessary in the script and i know that stephen moffat has since said that was a mistake of his and he shouldn't have put it in but he did, um, and it's there, and it's just embarrassing. I think it's cringy culture. Thank you for your question. I don't want to see any of that. The Doctor is an alien, and he doesn't dance with anybody except his own people. And whether or not they're still around now, I have no idea because I'm very confused about it all. I don't know, but yeah, thank I'm you. I'm not question. sure either what, what happened to them, um, whether they're back or they're destroyed. I don't really know. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Shut that TARDIS door, says Tony Crosby. Okay. Might nick that. Might nick that from you. <laughs> I like that one. The late, great Larry Grayson there. <laughs> I love that one. Shut that TARDIS door. Ooh, look at the looking in this console room. Um, fabulous. Richard is saying the Doctor had a partner of the opposite sex, at least one child with them, and at least one grandchild, Susan, which is conveniently forgotten by many fans and also the production team. That's what I was always saying. Whatever they did on Gallifrey, which I don't really want to know about, quite frankly, he did have some sort of partner and he did have a family. And so, if the Time Lords are swapping gender every five minutes, it doesn't work, does it? It gets very confusing. I remember um, uh, guys and everybody in the chat getting attacked back in the, the day when uh, Whitaker was announced, of course, was saying this is not, you know, this is ridiculous and the Time Lords don't gender and stuff. And one of my examples was, well, it's a good job Andred wasn't a Time Lord because Leela would have got a shock one morning over the cornflakes, wouldn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Goodness me, yeah. that didn't go down very well. <laughs> I can assure you on that one. Um, what else we got here? <laughs> uh, yes, we'll, we'll, yeah. there's a few of them I'm not going to put up, but they're quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, Richard is also saying to us, furthermore, the Doctor married River Song. I'm not seeing this as the Doctor being gay. Yeah, I, again, I just don't think he should have any sexuality. I, and it's, yeah. I, I know it's been enforced or, or suggested since 2005 but t for me that's personally a turn off i really well, don't we're that. not we're not against it the sexuality itself it's that in doctor who's the problem that's the thing isn't it mm, i just don't i mean yeah. I, I don't have a problem with leela falling in love or, yeah. or, or 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 something between ian and barbara i don't have that because they're human but he's yeah. not he's a time yeah. lord from the planet gallifrey isn't he Oh, well, in my eyes, the Doctor is a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey. I don't care what Chris Chibnall said. And he just never showed any interest in that. And to, to bring all that in now, I think, betrays the original 
premise of the show and the character. And I just think if they're going to do anything like that, which in which he's turning around and showing any sort of same sex attraction, I'm not going to be happy. I, I, I will possibly be very embarrassed about it. Yeah. Um, what we got here, Dalek, I love you. And I hope Gimme the Lovin' is not his catchphrase. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, can you imagine that on t shirts and, and some of these youngsters going around the conventions? Oh, shut up. It's, <laughs> it's got nothing on. Um, would you like a jelly baby? Has it? Let's be fair. But... I know. I mean, it's just, it's, it's scary, isn't it, really? What we could yeah. all do there. Um, Ah, oh, yes. And again, to culture, I wish all we had to talk about was how good Doctor Who is and has been. So disheartening to see the show slide further down into the depths. But do you know what? That's what we do here on Who's Views. And this month, April, we're having a laugh. We've just started with our Playing for Laugh season. And we've got three more in that season coming up. Join us as we start to review The Time Meddler, The Visitation, and Delta and the Bannermen. We're going to be looking at those through April. So go and watch them wherever you get them and then come back. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like in all our videos. The time medal is up there for you now to actually set a reminder. But let's enjoy some proper Doctor Who before we all get into this next month. How about that? And even if you're not watching these blooming episodes, come and watch us <laughs> as we suffer. Well, Delta and the yes. proper space baby in it, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm going to be the space baby for the first two episodes. <laughs> yeah, we'd be throwing our toys out of the pram. That's what we'll be doing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we throw all my toy Daleks out that window. Yeah, actually, no, I won't because some of them are worth something. What we got here is well, we've got Nathan. A character actor is sometimes not the lead role. However, it doesn't mean they might might not be an astonishing actor. Here, here, mm here, -hmm. here. And yet, some of the astonishing actors we've got that are further down the food chain. They work so hard and not all of them make it because the business yeah. is awful. And right now, of course, when they're too busy ticking boxes, Nathan, as I know from some of my lovely friends who are special, they have talent. They can sing or they can dance or they can act or they can do it all and they make me sick of them. But they're so good and talented. They're not fitting any boxes. Yeah. So, you know, they get frustrated and I get frustrated and angry on their behalf. Um, what else we got here? <laughs> give me the loving, nah, give me the TV remote. <laughs> 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 and Jack is saying, only in pantomime do we see this many costume changes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I wonder yeah. how many changes an episode of it, just the once or, or every 10 minutes? Or, you know? uh, I, we are going to be looking, of course, at Shooty's outfits, aren't we? We have to because it's going to be in there. But the one for me that isn't grabbing me at all, I just don't like this one at all. This one looks like he's just come out of a 1980s gay club. You know, yeah. this is the one um, where we know that. You know, spoiler coming up, everybody. Look, I'm learning. <laughs> Mel's in this one, isn't she? Mel's in that because we've seen her in scenes with that outfit. So this I'm taking it could be unit. He does look like one of the YMCA, doesn't he, to be honest? Uh, one of village people, I mean. He looks about that kind of... Uh, the police helmet would just finish it off, wouldn't it? Is that kind of look? You know, you know what? Struggling to fill that jacket, to be honest. Yeah. Mm. The Makes doctor's clothes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Coming, to, coming to whose views very soon. If there's, yeah, if there's a reason narratively it. for it, then that's okay. But if it's just, oh, put this on, you know, that's it. That's yeah. not the doctor, is it? No. And what were you saying there, Ian? No, Eccleston could pull a leather jacket off. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but, uh, that's true. He, he can't. Yeah. It looks, looks like a, a stick insect in it. Yeah. Richard is saying he hopes there aren't any spin offs. Yeah. <laughs> and Neville is saying, oh, no, I'm now thinking the devil's chord will be buried in the music, uh, the Beatles music and somehow destroy the world. I'm glad that you're thinking about it. <laughs> I'm glad that you're that interested in it. Sorry. That's the same concept as the giggle, really, isn't it? Something buried in something. Yeah. And Russell T. Davis does repeat himself. Yeah, well, that's what they were saying in the chat, wasn't it, as well? They were saying that earlier before. Um, yes. What else What else we got? What else we got? We are, we are not going to get an 11th hour performance from Shooty, says Raymond. He will be better than Whitaker, but he's never going to be great. What did RTD see that we didn't? Well, I could answer that with a theory, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Um, Same page. <laughs> I, I, well, I'll suggest... 
possibly uh, jobs for the boys type thing. <laughs> you know, you know. Oh, you, you, yes, you coming in on my page. I think he's got to give. I think he's got a bit of a Tom Baker smile about him. Uh, maybe that's what got him the job. But he doesn't. You know, he's not Tom Baker, is he? No. Nobody's going to be Tom Baker, and we're never going to get the likes of that again. Obviously, as this no. series continues, um, Doug is saying to us. Doug Smith is saying to us. I think Disney want the whole series to air first to see how well the viewership is on Disney Plus before starting any spin-offs. Well, certainly they've set them up for they set themselves up for some sort of success, surely, because they're dropping two at once on both Disney Plus iPlayer and BBC One. To be fair, if they're doing two series, though, it is only what sixteen episodes or eighteen if you count the Christmas ones. So it's not a, it's not a real massive season, is it? You know, mm. or massive two seasons. So it's not yeah. a lot of screen time, is it? Really? Yeah. Uh, hi to Adam, who's joined us as well. Adam Chapman, nice to see you as well. What do you think of that trailer? Have you seen it? Let me learn what you're thinking about it as well. I really want to like this. I feel my like my heart is broken a bit. Says Doug. Now Doug's been watching Doctor Who for quite a long time. Um, not wanting to be rude or anything, Doug, but you have, you know. Yeah. Um, and if I'm feeling the way I am, I, I, I think I'm on the same page as you because I really wanted to like this. I was so excited about all this. And then those three things came along last year. And my heart just went, this is rubbish. <laughs> I think <laughs> we all feel like that. I think we all feel the same way. I think we're all optimistic. And then our optimism was completely smashed to pieces, wasn't it? But... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, yes, that's exactly it. Dalek, I love you there. Uh, TARDIS Travels is saying to us as well, this feels like Austin Powers in space. Yeah, but that was funny and good. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kirsty, behave yourself. I see what you're saying in the chat. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, so listen, that's all coming about it here. So let's have one more look at those screenshots from this particular trailer that I took, shall we, everybody? Uh, again, the episode titles, Space Babies. The Devil's Cord, Boom, 73 Yards, Dot and Ethel, Dot and Bubble, Rogue, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, and The Empire of Death. And, uh, yeah, various pitches to try and sell this series. Whether or not it has worked, we will see. I don't hear anybody talking about it, to be quite honest, apart from us. So that's an interesting thing. We are going to be asking you in just a few seconds for your scores on the TARDIS doors. If you are new to us, what you have to do is tell us your marks out of 10 for this trailer. And the reason we're going to do scores on the TARDIS doors, which we've nicked from our review shows and put into headlines tonight, is because you asked for it on the last one. So thank you so much, as ever, for everybody for suggesting and being part of the show. Really appreciate it. Three of those episodes start with the letters R, T, and D. Oh, look at you being so clever. <laughs> how does he do that? I don't know how he does that. I really don't know how he does that, but I'm very impressed by it. But then I'm impressed by fickle things all the time. Now, listen, everybody, we, we may feel that although these people are creating havoc and destruction for millions of years, I know also that out of their evil must come something good. That's right. You can join us live from May the 12th for our reviews of this new version of Disney Who, RTD2, whatever you want to call it, Series 1. Yes, and as I say, we are, we, are, <laughs> we, are determined, we are determined to have fun and to really look at this in depth and um, have fun. So please join us, even if you're not watching it, come and have fun with us because we're going to have to get through. And as you can see there, we've got lots of stuff planned 
in those particular series. Right, everybody, are you ready for a headline special? As we've nicked from Who's Views Reviews, it's time for your scores on the TARDIS doors. <laughs> This is exciting because we don't do this on this particular show. Um, so I'm going to start saying, give us your scores on the TARDIS doors in the chat. And, um, well, thank you for that, everybody. Um, okay, yeah, you're having a really good chat in there as well. And you, oh, I love the fact that there's so <laughs> blue worm. Not particularly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I keep that to yourself, blue worm. <laughs> and I'm going to start with... Um, I'm going to start with Paul. Out of 10 for this trailer, what would you give the trailer out of 10 for the scores on the TARDIS doors? Um, well, I think I give the last one one, so probably one again. Yeah. yeah. One again? Yeah. Um, let's go to third Doctor Ian. What would you give this particular trailer out of 10? I wouldn't give it anything, and it's got everything to prove. Big fat zero. Not impressed at all. Quite depressed. Fine. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to align and agree with him. I'm giving it nothing because it didn't interest me at all. It didn't excite me at all. And I can't actually remember it. So thank goodness I took those photographs, those screenshots, because I can't remember. Um, and I, as I say, I want the trailer to have an impact, not just on us as fans, but the public, the general public of Great Britain. I want them to, you know, to be able to go, ooh, look at that, and I can't see any evidence of it at all. Well, it's quite funny. If, if you've forgotten it, the public certainly has. You know? Yeah. Well, I think most of the chat have as well. As Doctor Who 1963, yeah. hello to you. Nice to see you. I've wanted to comment, but ultimately I agree with the chat. First impressions of this season are not looking good. <laughs> well, if, you agree, if everybody's talking for you there, you, you do, don't you? You just say, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So thank you for that particular one, Doctor Who 1963. Richard Brooks is giving the trailer three out of 10. That's very generous. Tony, I think, Tony is giving the trailer minus one out of 10. Adam is saying to us, at least pirate this so they don't count your hate viewing as an agreement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Zero out of 10, says Dalek, I love you. The Doctor, nice to see you. The Doctor, four out of 10. Culture Papa B-Hop is saying two out of 10. Right. Uh, I don't know what that is from Richard. Do you guys know what this? I'm not very good it's with the a link, a link to something, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Cyber Matt. Hello to Cyber Matt. Four out of ten. Hmm. Adam, six out of ten. That's being really fair. That's the highest one we've had for this so yeah, far. Wow, that, that's, that's good. really good. Nathan is giving it one out of ten. Adam, don't forget to please come and check in. If you're enjoying them, do come to the review shows and tell us your review, uh, what you're thinking about them as well, because I reckon we're going to need to, to listen to people like you, to be quite honest. So please make sure if you're liking it, do come and join us. Yawn out of ten, says Matt532. <laughs> I've had surgeries less painful than that trailer, says Culture. <laughs> There's a story there, everybody. Uh, there's another emoji here from Richard. With somebody going like that. Yeah. Yep. Neville saying a six out of ten. It's slick and superficial. Good for the kids. Is it, though? Stay with us here on Headlines. We're going to be coming back to some stuff where I will be asking you, are certain elements of this series good for the kids now? Five out of ten, says Doug. As a trailer, it does what it's supposed to. I just keep wishing we had a doctor to go with it. Um, our very own Kirsty has given it four. Well, that's that's quite good, Kirst. Yeah, yeah. Gemma is saying, coffee? probably. Yeah. Gemma <laughs> is saying zero. And Jack, the lovely Jack, as a Doctor Who trailer, I give it zero out of ten. I genuinely have no idea what this is in, anymore. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's four out of ten. Thank you, everybody. Four out of ten from Bobby D seventy five. And uh, Paul is saying he'd give it one. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong chat. <laughs> no, yes. Nathan, what are you saying? Because of Millie Gibson, otherwise it would be a zero out of ten. Oh, so, oh I see. So, you, oh, 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 really? Oh, really? Zero. It's crap, says Blue Planet. <laughs> Always straight to the point. I love it. Mark yeah. is giving it a zero, and Raymond's giving it a two again for Millie. Uh, yes, thank you, Kirsty. <laughs> The cheek of that one. She's absolutely outrageous. Oh, 
Garbage is saying to us the trailer, one for looks, one for shooty showing emotions, so a two out of ten. Uh, yeah, and Raymond's confirming that with wind. <laughs> yeah. uh, Raymond's confirming a two both points for uh, uh, Millie only. Millie, and they said Billy. There's another comparison there. Uh, Blue Worm, one out of ten, but I like the name of the show. Doug is saying he can't remember it, so he's not going to give any marks. <laughs> Digby has joined us. Hello, Digby. Coming in towards the end of our time uh, on this particular show. 0 0.5 out of 10. Mark is making a wonderful point here. If you remove the TARDIS, I wouldn't even know it was Doctor Who. When you look at the whole thing, though, everybody, the only elements that are familiar to us are the, is the police box and a variation on the theme. And maybe the console room a little bit. I'm not even sure that, to be honest. Um, you know, I don't know, but I get what it's very I, Star you know. Wars y, the console room, isn't it? It's very Star Wars kind of um, yeah. clinical, isn't it? Yeah. We've been before, though, haven't we? That, that even the word police is technically problematic. So uh, that one's days numbered as well. Yeah. Oh, God. Can you imagine? Oh, and with, with, with Disney, God knows what they would want instead of a police box. Oh, God. So that, that oh, shot God. of the TARDIS from the previous trailer sitting there covered in moss, that's the last we'll see of the police box then. Yeah. Oh, see, now Paul is speculating and worrying us, isn't he? <laughs> well, it'd be a bit of a good old girl to be retired, then the whole series gets shut down then because no. it's not Doctor Who anymore, is it? No, it's not. It's not, you know, but it's just, it's very yeah, worrying, isn't it? Those aluminium diners, you know, yeah. it looks like a long trailer. Oh, it'll, be, it'll be an American telephone name, or something, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they can do that because of Bill and Ted. <laughs> well, that's oh, look at this! It will say safe space instead of police box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a flying, a flying door. Oh no, they've done that before. And Adam is saying, I've heard a rumor about change of the TARDIS design too, and having the chameleon circuit fixed. But they do have a budget for the SFX now. <laughs> oh, but why? They're just missing, if they did that, they'd be completely missing the point of the whole thing, really. Well, that would be the last bit of Britishness gone, really, from the show, yeah. wouldn't it? The, yeah. the, the good old-fashioned, now so out of date, it's funny British police box that happens to be a time-space machine. But it's an that's iconic when, that's image. no longer Doctor Who. Yeah, It's an iconic image, and it's an iconic sci-fi image, so it's like, if you take that away, you may as well do something else. Just leave Doctor Who alone, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam is pointing out they've already changed the screwdriver, yeah, to a, a, a bottle opener. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt five three two for five years prior to that, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, Matt five three two is saying to us all, really annoyed about the supernatural mythical figure themes. I loved how these would be ultimately be aliens before ghosts and werewolves, etc. The problem, as we said before, though, and, and and this is why he did it with Davros, is that the science fiction elements could be problematic, and it's why I don't think we're going to get the Daleks for some time because essentially they are tanks bubbling of hatred has been described in the novels so many times and um not nice <laughs> that's why i don't think we're going to get them because they are problematic aren't they really yeah. and um wh who are they who are they inspired by as well is problematic isn't it so that's yeah awesome. well that well uh, yeah Dalek, I love you, is saying, has the TARDIS got a split personality? Now there's two of her. That gives me a headache, that whole nonsense that they did there with that. There's yeah. two versions of the Doctor and there's two versions of the TARDIS. Yeah. Ridiculous, isn't it? It's just ridiculous, that. I, I, don't, I don't get that. And that whole thing... Tired out, isn't it, everybody? It was tired out. Well, listen, that, that was... I was talking about the trailer here. Thank you so much for that. I had, I do have some fabulous news to, to finish off with, though, or something nice to finish off with. I thought it would be nice just to lift our spirits for this particular show, everybody, and have a good old jolly jape together here. Because last week, you might know, actually, Mr. Smith, Mr. Matt Smith is in a, in, in a play in the uh, West End of London right now. Currently, some of the critics being critics because that's what they're paid to do said he's the best thing in it <laughs> and about it which is great for matt because we all know yeah. he's a wonderful actor but mr matt smith last week behind the scenes after his show hosted a lovely visit from another mr smith percy kent smith himself the one and only mr sylvester oh. mccoy so here they are behind the scenes after uh, matt's show he must have been knackered as well actually but this is in the dressing room and yeah, this was from Sylvester McCoy's Facebook pages. Thank you to Garbage for sending this one to me as well. Um, I just think that's a lovely picture there of the two Smiths together, isn't it? Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. 
Heartwarming. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And Sylvester's that... doing JNT's old finger point trick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Sylvan and Colin have a habit of doing that now, don't they? Yeah. With all that whole thing. Because well, that JNT did it all I, the time. When I, when I met Paul McGann, I did tell you I met Paul McGann. He did that as well. He does that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's I didn't so know you'd met McGann. Did you not know that? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you must tell me sometime. I'll tell you. Yeah. There's a video about it. JT, when was it called again? <laughs> it's it's called visitations. That's what calls, I calls visitation to me on the can. <laughs> it's all on the visitations playlist. Go and have a look at that. Richard is saying to us, "What a lovely picture that was!" Absolutely. And culture is saying to us, "Great show, fellas. Thanks for being so kind and welcoming. Catch you all next time." Absolutely. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Ring that bell so you get notifications of where we're going live because headlines could drop any time at all. Because the whole point of headlines is. When they drop a headline, we'll come and talk to you about it. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Nice to see you. Please subscribe. Please like to like the uh, video as well. Please share it. Do all the things you need to know. Keep in tune with us. We're going to be back very shortly. I am certain to talk more about our favorite show and the state it's currently in. From Paul, from Third Doctor Ian, thank you, you guys, and from myself. You. Hope you've enjoyed the show. We'll see you again soon. And as a friend of mine used to say, once upon a time, stay tuned. Good night, everybody. Good everyone. Bye-bye.